I wanna talk about how you can get ahead of 99% of all self-taught developers and become part of that elite 1% club. The first thing I'm gonna talk about is make sure that you learn with a purpose. Don't go aimlessly trying to learn random stuff and jumping around between different things because you hear people talk about it or you think it's the right way to go. Do a little bit of research on what you wanna learn. Pick the area of software development that you wanna get into. Then you need to make sure that you're learning stuff that people will actually hire you to do. Start doing a little bit of research around the job market in your area. Try to see what's in demand. Try to focus on the things that seem to have a lot of job postings and see what people are hiring for. You don't wanna spend a whole bunch of time learning programming languages or frameworks that nobody's hiring for. Because if your goal is to get a job, which that's what most people wanna do when they learn to code, you're not gonna be very marketable because you're not meeting the market demand. So make sure that you focus on stuff that can get you hired. Then make sure to find a roadmap that suits what you're looking for when it comes to getting a job and make sure that that roadmap is actually set up in a way that is structured to get you job ready. There's plenty of roadmaps out there and there's plenty of courses and tutorials that do follow a roadmap that gets you hired. Most of them do nowadays. I know that Free Code Camp does. I know that the Odin Project does. I know that Scrimba's Career Paths do. So those are all things that you wanna look into. There's also a website called roadmap.sh that has a lot of roadmaps laid out and all of that stuff is structured in a way that kind of guides you to getting job ready. It teaches you the basics all the way up until applying and interviewing for jobs. You wanna make sure that you take learning seriously. If you were going to college or if you were going to boot camp, they've got set curriculums. It's very well structured. There's gonna be times when you're gonna to have to show up and be there for specific times. There's gonna be projects that are gonna have deadlines. There's gonna be homework that you're gonna to need to do. And if you're setting yourself up as a self-taught programmer to learn how to code on your own, you should build a similar system. You should make sure that you take it as serious as you would with the school. You shouldn't just half-ass it. You shouldn't just kind of learn when you want to. Try to set up a good system for you to learn and take this seriously. I'm one of those people that will tell you you should code every single day when you're trying to learn how to code. Now, I know that that's not always realistic for everyone because people have hectic schedules and we have lives and we're human, but in reality, you want to be able to set a couple hours every day to learning, whether it be before work, after work, during your break, or when you have a little bit of free time, you should make sure that whatever that time frame is and that time period is that you can dedicate to learning every day, that you stick to that schedule and you do it as often as you can and try not to miss any days. Take this stuff seriously. Again, if you were going to school or a boot camp, you would have to show up every single day and you should do that too when you're learning how to code self-taught. The next thing I wanna talk about that will help you get ahead of 99% of all other self-taught programmers out there is gonna be not to waste time, but make sure that you give yourself time. Learning how to code takes a lot of time. I try to drill this into people. I've made videos where I talk about how long it takes to learn how to code and how to set realistic expectations for when you can get your first job. And there's so many people that sell the dream of learning how to code in three months, in six months. Hell, I just saw some influencer on Twitter make a course on how to learn to code in 14 days. That's bullshit. Learning takes time. It takes a lot of time to learn this stuff and it's gonna take you more time than you probably expected to. And even understanding basic simple concepts is gonna take you time. And that's just the reality of it. But you don't wanna waste time as you're learning and you prevent yourself from wasting time by the few things that I just talked about by learning with a purpose and setting up a real learning schedule and a good system for you to learn with, but understand that you'll probably still waste a little bit of time and that's okay, it happens. So try to focus more on consistent progress over speed. It's better to learn things and understand them and know how to implement them than it is to try to speed through a curriculum and get through a tutorial super fast and then not retain any of the information that you learned through that. Sure, it'll feel good to watch something on two times fast and then speed through all the multiple choice questions by using ChatGPT and then not really putting any effort into the projects. But the truth is that the learning comes in those projects and those questions that you start getting asked in some of these tutorials are to reinforce the stuff that you're learning. If you just breeze through that, you're not gonna retain any of the knowledge that you're trying to take in. So slow down and take your time to learn. The next thing I wanna talk about is avoiding distractions. Make sure that you focus on doing deep work when you're trying to learn. Make sure that you turn off the notifications on your phone. Hell, turn your phone off. If you're not using it to help you learn, turn it off completely because it's probably not gonna help you and it's just gonna be a distraction as you're trying to learn. Mute your notifications, stay off of social media, and only use the things that help you focus on the task at hand, which should be learning. God damn it. She messages me every at the worst possible time. 
Ah, what the hell was I talking about? Totally threw me off that. I just hear that ding and it's like, huh? Ah, sh see, distractions. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. I got distracted and it threw me off this video and it made me forget about what I was even talking about. Now imagine if I was trying to learn and that would happen totally throw me off my groove. So that's why you turn off notifications. Do as I say, don't do as I do, because that's a perfect example of how I got distracted there. Another good thing to avoid distractions is try to focus on one course or tutorial at a time. You don't wanna try to learn everything at once. It's not wise to try to learn HTML, CSS, JavaScript, React, a backend framework, databases, Git, and all of this different stuff in one sitting. You might have a course or a curriculum that will cover all of those things, but it will guide you through those things individually and not all at once. So try to focus on one course and one tutorial at a time before moving on to the next one and try not to do multiple courses at once because the information kind of might start bleeding over or you might start thinking about the other thing that you were learning when you should be focusing on this thing that you're learning now. Try to ease your way through it and focus on each thing as it comes and stay on one tutorial and one course at a time until you feel more comfortable and then start building and eventually get off of those courses and tutorials and start building stuff on your own. A big thing that you need to do is focus on fundamentals over frameworks. And when I say frameworks, I mean like development frameworks or even libraries. You wanna make sure that you know how to build things vanilla before you go and take on a framework. This will help you understand what these frameworks do. And I'm not just talking JavaScript, let's use CSS for example. Before learning Tailwind or Bootstrap, you should be able to write vanilla CSS and understand how to use vanilla CSS. Before you use a preprocessor like Less or Sass, you should be able to write vanilla CSS. It's really important to get a good understanding of the fundamentals before you start trying to learn all these different frameworks and libraries, because then you'll understand what these things are doing under the hood, and then you'll have a better understanding of why we use these tools and when to use them. Another thing too that's gonna to get you ahead is focus on problem solving and not memorization. So many of us feel like we have to memorize every single thing. The truth is that our jobs are to solve problems. Our jobs aren't to memorize syntax. So you gotta start thinking more about the problems that you're trying to solve and the things that you're trying to do rather than how to write the code. Especially now that we have tools like AI that are writing a lot of the code for us, you need to start thinking more as an architect and less like a bricklayer. Because if you're a bricklayer, then you just know how to write code and you know the syntax and you have all that stuff memorized and you do the same thing over and over. But being an architect means that you need to understand how things work and you need to understand how to implement things. And the way that you do this is that you learn to read through documentation. You really try to get an understanding of what things are doing. You read through your code, you step through your code, you learn how to debug code. This is all stuff that real developers do on a day-to-day -day basis. I remember when I got my first dev job and my senior developer told me to go debug something and figure out why something was broken and I had no idea where to start. And I felt that all the learning I had done was a waste because I couldn't even figure out how to narrow down where a bug was coming from. I didn't really take the time to understand how to step through code and how to find where and how a bug is being produced. A few good ways to help you with this is start reading through a lot of code. There's so many open source projects that are production quality code bases that you can go and just read the code. If you pick a certain tech stack, I'm gonna use Laravel for example, but insert whatever tech stack you want right here. Go look for production code bases that are open source that you can just look at, see how they're structured, see how the code's written. Try to understand why some things are done a certain way. This takes time and you won't be able to do it right away, but it's kind of what you want to work towards so that you can really become a problem solver and understand how things work and what everything is doing. Which leads me into the next thing that will help you get ahead of 99% of all self-taught developers, which is build stuff that scares you. Build stuff that's big. Try to build complex projects. Once you get through the tutorials and the basic stuff, once you're a few months into your learning, you should start taking on bigger projects and you should start building real applications. We are in a day and age where you can't just get by building a to-do list. That stuff is to help you learn and to help you solidify some of the concepts that you're learning early on. But as you've been doing this for a while, if you really wanna get ahead of all the other developers 
developers out there and you want to get hired, you've got to build more complicated applications. You've got to build more complex code bases and you've got to build bigger and better things to help you stand out. You want to take projects that are beyond your current level, but not too hard. Learn about APIs sooner than later. Learn about how to use a database sooner than later. Start getting into some server side code sooner than later. I know that many of us set out to learn how to code and become front end developers, but I feel like the days of the front end developers are kind of dying and we're all slowly turning into full stack developers. And yes, you can still specialize in front end, but you're almost expected to understand how back end works and how full stack works. So start diving into some of that stuff sooner than later. Another thing that is gonna help you get ahead of everyone else and it's gonna be the thing that helps you get to the finish line is that you need to not give up when it gets hard and know that it's gonna get hard. This stuff is difficult. This stuff is very, very hard to understand. It takes time for you to understand stuff. You're gonna be looking at code and it's gonna feel like you have no idea what you're doing. You're gonna feel ready and then you're gonna open up a text editor and feel completely lost and not know where to start. It happens to all of us. The thing is, is that this is part of the process. It's supposed to be hard. If it was easy, everyone would do it. And now it is a lot easier. There's a lot of tools that make this a lot easier now and you can use them to make things easier for you. Don't use it as a crutch too much. Make sure that you still struggle and learn because it's supposed to be hard. You're supposed to struggle. Where there's struggle, there's growth. If you're lifting weights and you're not struggling, you know that your muscles aren't gonna grow. And the brain works the same way. You wanna make sure that you're challenging yourself and you wanna make sure that you understand that it's supposed to be hard and that you work through those challenges and you work to understand those things and you stick with it. Trust me, learning the code is not easy for anyone. Maybe it's easy for a couple weirdos out there who are just like Rain Man and all this stuff clicks. I've yet to meet any developer who started off and said this stuff was easy, but I'm sure there's some people out there who this is easier for than others. But the truth is that it's difficult, it's hard to learn, it's gonna get hard, it's gonna be challenging, but it's supposed to be. And if you work through the challenges, if you embrace that grind and let it be hard and know that it's gonna be like that, you'll eventually work through it and the things that used to be hard will become easier and then you'll have more challenges that are gonna be difficult and it's gonna be rinse and repeat and it's just part of the process. Embrace the process and just work through it. You're gonna see people talking about how fast they've learned how to code. You're gonna see people trying to sell you the dream by telling you that they can teach you faster than you can learn somewhere else. And you're gonna see a lot of people who are gonna make you feel like you're a dumb developer. I still feel that way. I see people who I feel like I will never be on their level because they just understand concepts that I can't understand or that I don't understand. They just know things that I don't know. And overall, they feel like they're a 10X developer when I compare myself to them. And I, I'm saying this from someone who's got years of experience, who has imposter syndrome and deals with that. And I feel like I'm a good developer. I've seen it in my work. But at the same time, when I compare myself to other people, I feel like I'm not good enough. So what I'm telling you, if you wanna get ahead, if you want to make it through this journey of learning how to code and getting a job self-taught, you can't worry about what everybody else is doing. You can't worry about how fast other people are learning. You can't compare your knowledge to someone who has 10 years of experience. Just know that everybody learns at a different pace. People retain information differently. Some people, things just click faster. And for some of us, we might not have the same amount of time as other people do for dedicating to learning. And that's just the reality of it. I was really lucky when I was learning how to code that I was set up in a way that I had a good work schedule for it and a good wife who let me spend all of this time learning. And I was able to dedicate a lot more time than most people would be able to dedicate to on a daily basis. So if you've only got two hours a day, make sure you make that two hours count. And if you've been learning for three months and somebody else has been learning for the same amount of time, but they feel like they're light years ahead of you or you feel like they are light years ahead of you, don't let that affect you in getting you down and making you feel like you're wasting your time. Everyone's different. Everyone learns at their own pace. As long as you continue to learn and apply the things that you're learning, you'll get to where you wanna be. It just might take you a little bit longer and eventually things will click. It takes a while, it took me a while. I remember reading the same thing over and over. I remember doing like the same tutorials or trying to implement something and just not being able to understand what I was doing and feeling very, very dumb. And a lot of the times 
I would then go and wallow in self pity and like watch videos of people who had learned how to code and got a job in three months. And I was like six months into my learning and feeling like I was never going to get hired. And eventually things started to click. I started to build things out and I got to a spot where I was hireable. And I think that everyone can get there, but you shouldn't be comparing yourself to others and you should just focus on what you're able to do, what you're able to accomplish. And as long as you set your goals and you stick to them, you will accomplish them. Just give yourself time and don't worry about what everyone else is doing because all that's gonna do is make you feel shitty. Just focus on you. I know that last one was cheesy, but I was just trying to give you a big brain dump of all the stuff that I think that can help you get ahead of all the other people that are learning how to code, especially from a self-taught perspective, and help you get ahead of the 99% and become one of the elite one percenters who actually get a job and become a self-taught developer. And with all that said, I hope this video was helpful. If it was, make sure you hit that like button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Now go build something and go learn how to code. All right. Peace.